All right, guys, that was Vince Kelvin, founder of PUA Summit, and a whole bunch of other things, too. Awesome guy, awesome speech. Next up, we have Frederick, a.k.a. Satisfaction. This guy's been studying success with women for six years. Three of those, he's been in relationships. Um, the way he coaches, he, he likes to call it flirting. That's really what it's all about to him, not so much the uh, classic term we like to label social skills, game. So it's all about flirting, not so much the game. Uh, he also coaches women, too, actually. Uh, well, he's been a coach for a long time, and he coaches women. And he's been coaching in this field, like Vince and other guys, for uh, about a year and a half now. A little bit more, actually. And he's from Amsterdam. I was actually staying with him. I've actually seen the speech he's about to give you. I saw him practice it in Amsterdam, and it was, I'm not going to lie, pretty badass. It was the uh, first time I saw him speak, and I really, really liked it. Uh, and then I spoke right after him. Fun time. Fun city. And I appreciate him Let me crash at his place. No problem. So, yeah, shit. Dude, take it away, man. Kill it. I'm just, yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. All right, guys. My actual name is Frederick. No. Do you have an online name? Do you have an online name? What's no. your online name? Well, I can't even say it like, out loud. I don't even know how to say it. You don't even know how to say it. <laughs> but you do have an online name, so you have a double identity, right? So I, I have that too. I try to get rid of it. Do you know why I want to get rid of it? Because I like being real. I just like being a real, real guy. That's what it really comes down to. I love to be in touch with myself. I love to know what I want. I love to really have standards, both for myself and also the people I meet, right? Like if I meet not only a girl, but also a guy, and he doesn't really fit my core standards, for example, if he's dishonest, well, he can go somewhere, but please, not near me. And this is kind of something I want to talk to you about. Having standards in the women you meet, and also having standards in yourself. Does that correspond to something you know from uh, method flirting, or some people call it game, fine. Does that correspond to something, having standards? Can you imagine? What do you, what do you think? No? Nah, anybody? Value, it's not bad. However, I'm looking for something else. I'm looking for the most overlooked, understated thing there is in old school method. I'll say it with word one more time, game. Respect yourself. Qualification. Have you ever heard that word, qualification? Yeah. Right, this used to be something where you would give the woman a reason why you like her. See, I think, you should give her a real reason, a reason that actually corresponds to you. And this is basically what I want to talk about. Like Anthony said, I've been in this for six years. I've had one committed relationship in between for three years where I was with one woman. And that's actually something that, you know, when I'm 35, it's going to be over seven years, I don't see myself being at the club the whole weekend. You know, every now and then I will be, maybe once a week. But I'll have somebody with me, beautiful girl that I really love. I'm actually in a relationship right now, open relationship. Excellent girl, really like her. So um, this is what it's all about for me. But first of all, you know, it's pretty sad. I didn't have sex for three years. Not the last three, luckily. But uh, in a period of my life when I was 18, 19 to sort of 21, 22. There was a period of my life where I almost didn't even kiss a girl besides the yearly one drunk occasion where you sort of fall into somebody's lap accidentally, right? This is a, you guys can probably relate to that. I mean, who's, who, can, who can relate to this in this room? Who has a period of, who's had a period in his life where he didn't get what he want in terms of relationships, in terms of sex life, in terms of your own attractive lifestyle? Almost everybody can relate to this. Awesome. How long was your period of time where you had this? Two years? Yeah, two, three years. Was it like when you were 18, 19 in your sexual prime? Yeah, exactly. So, so how bad is that? So you, you've exactly been yeah. at the place where I've been. Congratulations. That's, uh, <laughs> it's really nice that you actually also admit this, you know? I really Amen. like that. Amen. See, I've been there too, and a lot of people in this room have been there as well, right? And this is what got me into learning how to flirt with women better, learning how to better interact with women learning how to be both happy with myself 
and the people I meet and the people I be with, the people I basically spend my time with. But since we've already started with a sort of story that uh, kind of corresponds to Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm Frederick, I didn't have sex for three years, I want to sort of take this a little bit deeper because there are some things that uh, people, when they get into this, some pitfalls that almost, I would say that almost nobody can avoid. And I've certainly had my share of these pitfalls, and I want to talk to you a little bit about these five, in my opinion, worst pitfalls that you can fall into. Number one, the information download junkie. Right? A lot of these companies make a lot of stuff freely available to you so that you come back to them, which is, I think, a good thing, both for their business and for your development. However, if you download the number 169th free ebook, what do you think that's going to give you? Any idea? What do you think that's going to give you? Just, just uh, uh, advertisement for the rest. And a lot advertisement for the rest, yes. And, and a lot of stuff you've read before already. This is going to be boring? Yeah, yes, it's going to be boring. And you know what? You're going to spend a lot of time searching and downloading these ebooks. And then in the end, you're going to get completely confused. Because as we all know, there's natural flirting, there's a method for it. There's even um, NLP-based methods for it. Speed seduction, whatever, you name it, it's there. And when you get into the phase where you try to naturalize speed seduction in a method phase model, then you're really going to get screwed up and you're never going to get anywhere. You know, I've certainly had my share of this. Has anybody, has anybody downloaded a lot of stuff that afterwards, like, they thought is completely useless a few years later? Yeah, half of the room can relate, the other half are still downloading. I hope you stop that right now and you actually focus on the stuff you have and actually on yourself and your interactions with others because that's what you learn most. That's exactly the point where you really learn. You don't learn something by just reading stuff in front of your computer and I like to say mentally masturbating about it. That doesn't give you anything. Get out of the house, meet people. You know, meet girls, meet guys. Like Vince said earlier, meet the old lady. Why not? Talk to the cashier in the supermarket. You will make their day. It has a few benefits for you too. You know how I check into a hotel? How do you check into a hotel? Uh, it depends on if it is a woman or a guy. But well, you say my name is XYZ, I have a reservation usually, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I say? No. Hey, how are you doing? Are you having a good day? Awesome, really like to meet you, it's good being here. And uh, yeah, my name's Frederick and yeah, I've reserved a room. But first of all, I try to make their day just a little bit better. I've spent 122 nights in a hotel last year for my job. And you know what? I realized this at some point and it's not only making their day better, but you know what it also happens, what it also leads to? Well, not only that, they will also say like, hey, you know, um, We'd actually like to offer you an upgrade. So how's that? You're making their day, they're making your day. It's a mutual exchange of value. So actually go out and do stuff and don't be reading the whole time, right? Actually practice. Another pitfall. I need to take my notes here because I'm not that smart to remember an entire uh, poem by myself. We've had the confused information or download junkie. What could this relate to? Wasting time. Right? This is another pitfall, wasting time on activities that are basically not useful, that are not bringing you further. So we know now the two pitfalls and what they lead to. So what I really want to do now is I don't just want to paint a black picture. I want to give you guys a remedy for this. Also you guys at home watching right now. Because you're, maybe you're watching the second video, which is good because there are awesome videos on the site. Maybe you're watching the 69th video. Well, in a row. <laughs> I think you should first of all go pick up something to eat, maybe have a drink and exercise before you watch the other videos. You know, you should do something useful with your life. I'm not saying that having a lot of information is not useful, but A, it can get you confused and B, it can help you to waste a lot of time. Limit yourself. Limit yourself. I will only read two hours worth of ebooks every week or four or six, depending on if you're a student or if you're unemployed and you might have a bit more time. Personally, I have a job that costs me 50, 50 to 70 hours a week. If I start reading 16 hours worth of ebooks, yeah, you can imagine where my week goes and my sleep. Absolutely nowhere. I won't have a life anymore. So take this as a rule. Read stuff about time management. 
and apply it to this. Apply it to learning flirting skills. There are better things to do than just dabbling around on the internet.